Remember the many relationships that I told you lines have with each other? They can come together in many ways. If I have one line over here, like this, like this, like this. Now, we actually have a measure to say how far apart these guys are from each other. And that measure has a special name, angle. So, we say that angles are born when corners are formed. Well, corners are formed when lines come together, like this. Take this book for example. So if you look at this book, it's closed now, but if I start opening it, yeah, right about here, and if I pause that, this angle, this is what I mean by angle. How else can you get an angle? You can also get an angle when two rays decide to shoot off from one point as well. This is an angle. And this common start point is called the vertex of the angle. And the two rays that form the angle now get a special name. They're called the arms or the sides of the angle. They function like arms, right? They hold the angle in place. And now, let's represent an angle mathematically. Let's name this figure. Ah, lovely. But how would you name this angle? Of course, I can say that O is the vertex, OP and OQ are the arms. But the angle, this is angle POQ, right? Make sure the vertex is at the center of your naming angle POQ. Now this is important. Naming an angle correctly is really important. I'll tell you why. Say you've got some angles like this. Okay. Now if I say, tell me where angle P is. What would you say? Would you say it's here? Would you say it's here? You won't be able to tell, right? Now what if I say, tell me specifically where angle APB is. Aha, now you're able to tell me that it's over there. So having the names of the arms and the name of the vertex at the middle is important. And that's how you name an angle. Put a little sign before it and there you go. That's how you name an angle. So say this angle ABC. I need two copies of it. Okay, so let me take that. You'll see why in a bit. So in one copy, I'm going to shade the part bordering where line segment BA is and covering BC. Keep it aside. And in the other copy, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to shade the part bordering where line segment BC is and covering BA. And now that I've got both of them, observe carefully, what am I doing? I'm going to bring it together. And now the portion which is common to both the shadings is what we call the interior of the angle. So this kind of looks to you like it's restricted, right? But remember that an angle is not in restricted area. Why? Because it's made of two rays. If I push the vertex down more and more and more, the arms go on and on and on and on. So the interior would go on and on and on. If you like this video and want to watch many, many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.